Hey everyone. On today's video, I'm going to go over downloading, installing, and configuring the software to set up and run a light show. So to get started, I would recommend taking a picture of your house. Once you have that, we can create a show folder. So go ahead and you can right click and you can call the show folder whatever you would like. And then once we have that, if you plan on running multiple holidays for your light show, then we can create multiple subfolders inside this folder. And then we can drag our house picture into that. Once we have our show folder set up, we can download the software. So we can open up a browser, go to xlights.org, click on downloads, and then we can download the software. Once the software is downloaded, we can run through and get it installed. Go ahead and say yes to this, and then go ahead and say next. Yes, next, next, and install. I'll go ahead and speed this part up for you guys. All right, now that that's done, it's going to ask if you want to launch Xlights and open the README file. The README file is gonna give you some information on the latest release or what has changed from the last version. So you can open and read that or close it up to you. Go ahead and say finish. And then when Xlights opens for the first time, it's going to ask you to pick a show folder. Once you have the show folder selected, you'll be brought to a screen that looks like this. And it's going to ask you to put in an email address. This is up to you, but what this does is allows the developers to receive crash reports and when they receive that they'll be able to make improvements and correct any type of bugs that are in the software so good idea to do that and support them after we put that in or skip that we are brought to a screen that looks like this go ahead and you can click add ethernet to add a controller and we want to give it a unique name something that is also descriptive. So in our case, I'll say main F16. That'll be the F16 that I use for the majority of our props in our house. The second F16, we could call something like Megatree F16. That way we can differentiate them. It's an F16, so it is from Falcon. It is an F16 B3. In this case, I'm not gonna select any expansion boards and the IP address is going to be located on the little display for the Falcon when you connect it for the first time. Once you put that in, the next thing we'll wanna do, um, I generally recommend selecting these options up here. This gives everything full control for X lights to be able to send to the controllers. Once you have these selected, we can go over and click on save. Go ahead and click on layout and from here we don't see our house picture um, really don't see anything in the screen that's useful at this point but down here it says background image go ahead and click over here and then click on the dots this will allow us to browse and select our house photo so now we can see the house photo what we can do at this point is start to create props and the way we set up this show folder, we created it to be used with multiple holidays. So I would start by designing props that are gonna be used for all holidays instead of holiday specific ones. So up here, you have all your different options. You have arches, candy canes, icicles, matrixes. Um, in our case, I'm gonna do this polyline to be used as a roof outline. So I'll click that and then you can click down here. That's where it begins. Click and drag my mouse over here. And once I get to the end, go ahead and click again. Go ahead and move the mouse up, click again. 
go ahead and move the mouse over, click again, and go ahead and click at the end. To get out of this or to end the string, just click the escape key. And from here, you can see how far apart the pixels are going to be spaced. That's going to be a lot farther than what I would like. So we can change that down here by changing the number of pixels. Just make this match however many pixels you plan to install for that prop. And you can see now it looks basically like a line as opposed to just some dots. I would also recommend changing the name to be something descriptive. In our case, we'll call it a roof outline. And if the amount of pixels that are in this segment here don't match what are actually installed on your house, what you can do is right here where it says individual segments, go ahead and check that, click this little drop down, and then you can adjust these. So maybe it's only 75 pixels. So you can change that. And as you can see, the density for this changed. So you can make sure that all of these match and are correct. Um, if you want to add more outlines, we can do that. So we'll come up here, we'll do that. And then it's still attached, so you can click the escape key. So now we have another polyline. So over here, it shows that they have different amounts that may be accurate, they may be the same, but this would allow you to adjust it. So just for argument's sake, we'll do something like that. And now we have a couple different outlines and what we could do is we could save this. We can go back to the controller and click on visualize and you'll have the different props over here. So we can drag these to our different ports and the port over here is where you'd want the prop physically connected. So you just wanna make sure if you're gonna connect the gable roof to port one, that that's the way it's set up in here. If you want it to be port four, really doesn't matter. Just make sure that when you physically connect it, it matches. You also wanna be aware of the pixel count over here. There is a maximum amount of pixels per port. Each controller is a little bit different. So just reference the manual for the controller you're using. And then one other thing to be aware of with this is the props themselves have a green and a blue square at the beginning and end. The starting location that's listed over here, you want to make sure is your starting location. If, for example, you wanted to make this be the starting location, instead of being a green square, you can click this and say blue square. And if you click on this one, it's also a green square. We could change this to blue if we want. Now I could run the two wires to connect these props up over here. And then both of these props would begin at this point and this would be pixel one for this prop, pixel one for that, and the data would flow that direction instead of the other way around. Really doesn't matter, you just wanna make sure whatever the pixel starting point is when you physically install them is defined correctly in the software. Pixels are direction oriented, so if you do this backwards, it's not going to work. All right, so right now we have a simple house outline for the roof and everything is basically just defined in our show folder. If we had this connected to a real controller, we could say upload input and then upload output. That will send the information to that controller and then we could start to test and play with things. In our case, this is just going to be outlines that we use from holiday to holiday. So let me open the show folder and I'll show you what this looks like in here. So we have these different Exolites files and these are gonna be used for all of our holidays. In our case, what I would do is copy these. 
we can paste these into the Halloween folder. And then I'm also going to create an additional media folder. And then an additional sequence folder. In the media folder, we can add things like audio, images, video files, all of that type of stuff. I like to keep my things organized so I have multiple subfolders that are created, but you can basically drop everything into one folder if you'd like. So just as a sample audio file, we'll add that in there. And notice that these files are still there because we created a copy. We could then also copy these and drop these into a Christmas folder as well. So that way we have a base starting point for each holiday. We'll go back into X-Lights and for this demonstration, we're gonna do a Halloween layout. So we'll click on change permanently. And that means next time X-Lights opens, it's going to open this new folder. So we'll click on Halloween and then click select. It's going to ask if you want to save any of these files. We've already saved it, but we'll save it again. It's telling us that the auto save looks newer. Do you want to replace it? In this case, we'll just say no. So now we are in our Halloween folder and it shows that up here. It looks the same because we haven't added any specific props. So we can come up to this download tool and this will let us download props from different vendors like Boscoyo or Gilbert Engineering. So let's come in here, we'll add some of these spiders from Boscoyo and we can kind of play with the different sizes to make sure that they are proportional. One other thing you can do is if you click on a prop, if it looks blue that means you can move it, resize it, all of that good stuff. You could right click and click lock. That way if you accidentally click on it, you aren't going to move it. So we'll make a few different spiders real quick. And then I would give these unique names. So you can click on the different props. This is the spider in the top right. All right, so now we have a few spiders over there. We can add oops, some more, we'll say tombstones. And they have lots of different versions of them. So if you wanna have different tombstones, you can do that. Again, I would just rename these just so you can keep track. All right, so now we have a few different props that are set up and are gonna be used for Halloween. We come back over to the controller, go back to visualize. And what we're gonna do is again, define which prop is connected to which port. So we'll go ahead and say spider bottom left is then connected to bottom right, and then from bottom right to top right, and then to top left. And then we'll say the tombs are connected from right to left. We would then say upload input, upload output. That'll send that updated information to the controller. We'll save it over here. And from here, we have a few props for Halloween. And most people will then create groups, which will allow you to add effects per group. So make a couple groups real quick. So you can click on them and then create group from selection give those a descriptive name.
and then most people have groups where they have everything as well. All right, so we have a few different groups here, and then we can go into the sequence tab, and this will allow us to create a new sequence. So click File, New Sequence. A musical sequence is any sequence that uses music, so that's usually what you would select. So go ahead and you can say New Sequence, and then it's going to ask you to pick the audio file. In our case, it is in Halloween, under Media, under Audio, and then we can select that audio file. The 40 frames per second or 20 frames per second is up to you. If you're getting a sequence from a vendor, most of the time they use 40. So you can click on 40. And then it's going to put all of your elements over here. If you right click and say edit display elements, you can rearrange the order of these. This comes in to play when you have a sequence with multiple layers or effects on different layers. You're going to just want to make sure that the order of this is correct. Um, all right, so just for this demo, I'm going to set all at the top, then outlines, tomb spiders, and then all of the props below that. Up here at the top, you have all of the different effects that you can play with. And just as a demonstration, we'll go ahead and add this butterfly effect. And by default, it starts with this rainbow color. You could change that to be a palette. And the palette is up here. And you can make it a bunch of different colors. You can click on the color to change so we could get more of a Halloween themed color palette so that's a little more Halloween oriented and as you can see up here you have the model down here it shows the house preview it's kind of hard to see the pixels when the picture is super bright like this so if you go back into the layout tab and you click so you see the house photo over here. You can click on this brightness option and you can change that. I typically have mine at a brightness where I can barely see the house and this allows me to get a better representation of what the lights would look like at night. So we'll save that. We'll go back to the sequence and we can see what that looks like. And as we start to kind of play around with the different settings for this, you can see as we start to make changes for these effects, it looks different. It's obviously doing different things. This is really an art form. You can spend hours and hours sequencing. Most people do spend several hours per minute of song to create a sequence. But best recommendation to start to learn this is just kind of click on the different sliders, see what they do, see what looks good to you. And then if you wanted to add different effects for different props, you could do something like that as well. So if you wanted to create kind of a multi-layered type of effect, we come down here. And even though I have the rainbow or the butterfly effect up here I have the pinwheel down here and it is going to show over the house outlines even though we have something else on the all element when you click on these it will start to play through it so once you get to different points it's going to show you exactly what it's going to look like so as the song transitions, you can make this match the different mood and feel of the song and give you a really good idea of what this song is going to look like on your house before you even buy anything or set up any props. And as you see, it just kind of changed. The spiders and the tombstones are still using that butterfly effect, but the house outlines have switched over to this pinwheel effect. 
So you can get real creative. Like I said, you can spend hours and hours on creating all these custom sequences. And if you click play, it will allow the song to be heard while you are working on this. So you can really get a feel for matching all of that. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it is, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe to our channel, comment, and let us know what videos you'd like to see us do next.